So it was brought to my attention the other day that Zay Bang announced on a now-deleted Instagram post that he allegedly got scammed for $600 from a YouTuber. Apparently, he was trying to buy some GTA mods, which, uh, for those who don't know, are these silly little third-party game software modifications that allow you to get customized cars and character skins, etc. I found it kind of odd that Zay Bang, being from the streets, ran to the net to uh, tell on this alleged scammer. I've seen people get called a rat for simply waiving their Fifth Amendment rights, whether they say anything incriminating or not. They still get called a rat. Uh, but this is tattletaling, and uh, it struck me as a double standard. Zaybang uh, gets scammed, fair and square, mind you, and then he runs to the net uh, to detail what happened to him and exposes the guy's platforms and everything. So in my mind, this is no different than filing a police report. I mean, it is a well-known fact that the police are on the internet looking on the social media. There's social media task forces, guys, that are looking for things to investigate based on social media posts and things like that. And here we have Zaybang exposing someone for uh, wire fraud, which is a felony. And you can get someone in serious trouble. So are you out of your fucking mind? Why, why are you doing that? Anyways, you know, all these rappers are fucking popping their goddamn shit, thinking that they're rich and all this stuff. But we have rappers signed to record labels that are crying about 600 bucks. Look, as someone who's not from the streets at all and doesn't allegedly have stacks and stacks of rap money laying around, if I lost 600 bucks to a scam... I'd be proud of the guy. I would say, look, this guy scammed me and uh, he got away and I'm going to I'm gonna learn from it and I'm going to move on and I'm not going to embarrass myself any further. You understand? So I guess I'm just confused why a rapper from the streets is trying to knock bro's hustle and get him pinched allegedly. I'm guessing he realizes after a while and that's why he deleted the post, but unfortunately, it's much, much too late at this point. So this got me a little suspicious about Zay Bang and where he's from and if he's really from the streets or if he's more of like a little Sito type that's just a rapper and just raps about things like that and it hasn't really come from that uh, lifestyle. I'm not a huge fan of Zay Bang, although I used to be a fan of his until he changed his voice to that cringy, raspy sound and all his bars started to come off kind of lazy. So I went back and looked at some of these interviews that he has and I, I came across an interview he had with Little Blood TV to see what his backstory was and if they covered that. And the results, well, they were very, very confusing. And I'm going to show you why. Here's a clip of Little Blood confronting Zay Bang about, you know, switching hoods, I guess, from Hunter's Point to the Geneva Projects. Watch this. Right, right. What part of Frisco are you from? The Towers. Geneva. Geneva Towers. Mm -hmm. um, ain't that the buildings they tore down? The notorious Geneva Towers. Two low-income high-rise buildings where drug dealers rule. So back in the 70s, 80s, and 90s, which was known as like the dope era, when the crack epidemic was really bussing, uh, these were a very incredibly dangerous place to live in these projects. And this is why everyone still tries to say they're from the Geneva Towers when in reality the Geneva Towers got demolished back in like 1998 and they hadn't been inhabited since 96 or something. It's just kind of like a urban legend almost at this point. Nobody who's under 40 can say that they grew up in the Geneva Projects or they're from the Geneva Projects. Back in the day, all these gangs started to form because they were drug dealer gangs. They were little drug dealing networks and they were fighting over drug turf. This was the dope era. And this is why they always had the rivalry between the Sunnydale projects and the Geneva Towers projects because they were like fighting over drug turf. They were right next to each other. Look at the bottom left-hand corner. That's Sunnydale down there. So that's how close things were. And that's where all the gang stuff started in the Bay Area. And that's why there's no Bloods and Crips. Gang banging in the Bay Area originated from drug dealing crews and things like that, prostitution, gambling, etc. There's just cliques. There's just little gangs and stuff like that. But things aren't quite like that now. I mean, it's still there a little bit, you know, the crime and the violence, but it's not the way it used to be at all. Today, while gathering these pictures, cameraman Jerry McEwen and I were attacked by a youth who blew out the rear window of our car. Police aren't sure if the youth hurled a rock or fired a gun. You could not go out into the hallway. Go out in the hallway, no chance. Because you were terrified, you were terrorized. Uh, you were involved, there were shootings in the hallways. Bodies was coming out of the windows. No, dead people.
So the legend of the Geneva Towers is what keeps everyone trying to say that they're from there because that's where all the toughest people were from. They were from Sunnydale, the Geneva Towers, Hilltop Gang, Hunters Point, Harbor Road, Double Rock, etc. So now everyone whose mom or dad grew up there, they also can say they grew up there, which to me is stupid. Kids with parents that grew up in these Geneva projects, uh, you know, they'll tell them stories about how crazy things used to be. And then the little kids are thinking like, I'm from Geneva Towers too. My mom and dad are from Geneva Towers. That means I'm from the Geneva Towers. I'm going to tell everyone I'm from the, you know what I mean? And it's just kind of getting out of control when in reality, it's just the tower side now. It's just, you, if you're in that set, grew up in that section of town and you're in the politics, whatever, you're from tower side. You, you're not from the Geneva Towers. Okay. So Little Blood uh, hears Zabang make the claim that he's from the Geneva Towers, and he kind of stops and goes, wait, didn't they tear those down? And kind of he call, kind of calls him out a little bit. Let's watch. I want to apologize in advance, too. The audio for this podcast is trash. They have no idea what they're doing about the audio. I mean, I don't know what is going on. I don't know who's, I don't know who's monitoring this or who's producing this, but they need to fix it because this is almost unlistened to a bull. I mean, no wonder there's no views on this, but let's watch the clip. Right, what part of Frisco are you from? The Towers over the there. You feel me? Geneva. Geneva Towers. Mm-hmm. Um, ain't that the buildings they tore down? That's... I ain't even grow up in them, though. I lived on Harbor at that time. Okay, so Lil Blood asks him where he's from in San Francisco, and he quickly just snaps off the answer. Right, what part of Frisco are you from? The Towers over there. You feel me? Geneva. Geneva Towers. And um, Lil Blood says, wait, didn't the Geneva Towers get demolished like 30 years ago? And then Zaybang changes his answer to... I'm not really from there. This is what he said. I'm not really from there. I'm really from Harbor Road, which is a completely different hood. It's in uh, Hunter's Point. And then he says, I'm from, I was from Harbor Road at that time. What the fuck are you talking about? No one said anything about a time or time frame. It's where are you from? I mean, I do give him credit for coming out and actually admitting that he's from a few different places. But at first, he just rattled off the answer, the Geneva Towers, and was like, mm hmm. Next question, which is disingenuous, to say the least. I ain't even grow up in them, though. I lived on Harbor. So after discovering that Zaybang's not from Geneva Towers, he's actually from Harbor Road, it aroused my memory a little bit to a clip of a Swamp Stories uh, video where this rapper, A.B. Millie, who, shout out A.B. Millie, he's home from prison just in time for the holidays. A.B. Millie was on Instagram Live from prison exposing the fact that Zaybang is actually from Sunnydale. And so what the fuck is going on? I'm thinking when I hear he's from Harbor Road, I'm like, wait, and, and Harbor Road is an enemy of Sunnydale as well. So I'm like, wait a second, what the fuck is going on? I don't know what the hell is going Let's just, I'm just going to play you the clip. Incarcerated rapper A.B. Millie from Sunnydale hops on Instagram Live and starts dissing Zaybang and dead Towerside members. He talking about Zay? Who's you talking about? You talking about Zay Bang that used to be from St. Hill, used to be from my hood? Then he went down to the towers because he was a sucker, because he used to get pumped? The fuck out of here, dude. So that's three different hoods now that uh, Zay Bang is allegedly from, and I don't know what to think. I mean, as a music listener, I like to know where the artist is from, because if they're rapping about this type of content, I'd like it to be genuine. You know, I'd like there to be some uh, validity to it, like... You can't be like little Sito and rap about all this violence and all this struggle when you grew up nice in a nice house and nice family and stuff like that. So I'm like, what the hell's going on? So I went to look up uh, some uh, Little Bean interviews. And sure enough, Little Blood's got Little Bean uh, on the interview and he asks him about all this stuff. And it's really fascinating because Little Bean also thinks he's from the Geneva Towers and he's not either. He's from the tower side, the vi- the the valley, the Visitation Valley. He's not from that people flying out of the buildings and the crack in the hallways and the shooting. I mean, it's just not where what uh, he's a product of. That's not where he's from. So let's watch the Little Bean uh, explanation of where everyone's from. Zay Bang up here. Bro, that nigga speaks so highly of you, bro. What's that relationship? Shit, just been through it all together. Shit, I knew him since like kindergarten for real. Right. Right. Before he even moved to our hood. Right, right, right. So, so, he was, so when he come to the hood, like, nigga, hey, what you, feel me? He like, but I really grew up in Harvard. Yeah, early on. Yeah, he like, yeah. nigga, I came um, to the towers, you feel me? Because mm-hmm. I was asking him about the old building. Did you yeah. get to experience the old building? See, like, we was born, like, 
it got tore down when we was born. Mm -hmm. Like I lived, my first house was in Sunnydale. I lived in Sunnydale until I was like five or six or something. So like, yeah, we didn't get to experience the buildings, but my whole family from the buildings. Right, right, right. So like, you know, so we, we grew up in the little things that it is now. So if you're wondering what the little things that it is now, what they did was they put in some new housing and it's still low income. And a lot of the people stayed, maybe about half or a third of the people uh, that were from the Geneva Towers moved into these new places after they were built. And then, you know, the other half got displaced and went to other hoods, other cities. Some people even moved into Sunny Sunnydale is crazy because they actually have like their ops are like living next to each other type shit. It's pretty crazy. So uh, this is what it looks like. Now there is uh, one more piece of uh, strange activity I need to bring up after watching more of the Little Blood Zaybang interview. Just listen to this clip and I'll explain in a second. My nigga knew I could rap a little bit. My nigga Nitty Bang, he from the point, he my family. Shout out Nitty Bang. Yeah, for sure. So what bothered me about this is that his name is not Nitty Bang, it's Nitty Banga, and I know Nitty Banga, and he's a well-established figure. Nigga, go get crazy, that thing bang be patched Go shit, no Casper, what you saying really don't matter. Swing out of that Tiger Woods. So he's been around forever, he's very well-known, he's got albums with Burner, he's got songs with all these stars. Everyone knows who Nitty Banga is in the Bay. He is stamped, he is a legend, okay? His name is not Nitty Bang, Okay. And what's crazy is I think Nitty Banga is the one who discovered Zaybang and started putting him on and getting him studio time and everything else. And I think that he even, this is speculation, I think Nitty Banga gave Zaybang his name. Older young niggas felt me. They like, Ooh, that's little Zaybanga right there. It was Zaybanga, but I got older. You know how people will name someone like a, like a littler homie? After themselves, hey, this kid reminds me of a young me. I'm going to name him, in this case, my name's Nitty Banga. I'm going to name this kid Zay Banga. I gave him a little nickname. Take him under my wing type thing. That's what I think is going on here. And Zay Bang even admits that he didn't give himself that name. Just Zay Bang, family. So I just ran with it. I didn't give myself that name. So he got it from somewhere. Like, not five people don't start calling you something. It's one person comes up with it, and then everyone else, it kind of sticks. So who gave you the name? Zay Bang. I think it was Nitty Bang. I'd like to give uh, Nitty Bang a full credit for that right now. And I don't know why people have to give people like half credit and stuff like that. It's like, dude, wh why are we acting like we don't even know who he is? You're not pronouncing his name right. Little Blood's acting like he doesn't know he who he is. Little Blood pronounces his name wrong too. Let me tell you something. Little Blood knows exactly who Nitty Bang is. Okay. He's got songs with him from back in the day. I mean, this is crazy. Why are you pronouncing his name wrong? You know exactly who he is. You know exactly how to pronounce his name. So here we are in this podcast of, with little, Bl I mean, these, both these people know exactly who Nitty Banga is and they're acting like he's just some guy. They're not even pronouncing his name. I, I mean, I can't get over that really. I mean, this is Zay Bang's self-admitted main influence to get into rap and there's more to talk about with Nitty Banga. I mean, the guy is a somebody. Why are we pronouncing his name wrong? Why are we brushing over him as if he doesn't deserve major credit? And he and listen, Zay Bang's not the only one Nitty Bang to put on either. So what the fuck? Shout out Nitty Bang. I mean, get the fuck out of here. I'm on your ass, little blood. You need to stop with that. You need to uh, report what's really going on in the Bay because this whole podcast was uh, bullshit. You know, and a lot of people are going to be in the comments saying, oh, they can't talk about certain stuff because it's politics. Get the fuck, then stay off podcasts. What the fuck are you doing on a podcast if you're a big gangsta? Okay, and stop and if it's if the Geneva Towers is just politics, shut the fuck. Why are you on a podcast uh discussing politics in front of me? You know? That's stupid. So what we learned here today is that Zay Bang is worried about 600 bucks and he doesn't really want anyone to know where he's from and he doesn't want anyone to know who Nitty Bang is. So that's good. Anyways, this is the end of the video. I got to get off here. I'm getting tired. Point and shoot signing out.